Aloha, aloha, and welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe'e. And we today are continuing with our historic series called In Insurrection, Impeachment, and the Aftermath. And our guest is Senator Maisie Hirono. I, I, I can't, uh, <laughs> fantastic. Maisie, Maisie and I have been through so many political things together. I, I just get excited <laughs> to see you, Senator. I, you know, there's so much that we could talk about and all of that. But, you know, to focus, where were you when these people were attacking the Capitol? We were, I was in the Senate chamber and we were just beginning the debate on the challenge to the, um, what was it, Arizona count, right. or the electoral count. And there we were. And... Uh, uh, one of the Republican senators who had objected was speaking. And what I recollect is uh, suddenly all these staff people rushed into the Senate chamber and that was unusual. And they stood toward the back. And the next thing uh, we see the vice president who was presiding at that time rushed out of the room. Um, then the, followed by all of us being told that we should in an orderly way uh, move to a more secure place. And at that point, we were told it's Like that, a fire drill, kind of. You know, well, like but we, we knew that there was something definitely going on. That uh, uh, We had the idea that, that the uh, barriers had been breached, but we didn't see what was going on with the whole world and the rest of the country was watching in real time until we were in our secure place. And it, it was, um, I would say, uh, an hour or so before TV monitors were brought in and we saw the um, what was happening, the siege on the Capitol and, and the horror and, and just the, uh, I, I cannot tell you how to describe watching these people breaking windows and, and coming in and, and looking for us. And at yeah, that, that time, it, it was, uh, you know, some of my colleagues were um, in situations, they were not with the larger group at least one one person, Patty Murray, and she's talked about this after she processed it more. But she was in her hideaway, and that the rioters are banging on her door, and she didn't know whether the door was locked. Her husband was propping the door shut with his foot, because if they tried to lock it at that point, the rioters would have known that somebody was in there. So it was very frightening, and of course, members of the house were in much more exposed positions. And we all saw them with their safety hoods on and and uh, having to uh, crouch in the upper levels of the house. But we, wow. I didn't know until much later that uh, the rioters were kept away from the senators who were being, um, uh, we, we were <laughs> marching literally to our secure location, but the rioters were not very far from us. They were at the other end of the hall and the, and the police, uh, law enforcement blocked them from getting to us with their with their bodies well, and i don't you know, know if the writers knew that it was senators uh, being you know being yeah taken that you that their targets uh, were right down the hall did you ever ever in your entire career ever thought that no. this would happen no I, I, it's just no. inconceivable and the thing is that it's not over uh, mm -hmm. and the hearings are going on in fact yesterday the Judiciary Committee on which I, I sit heard from Chris Ray, the FBI director, and he said racially motivated extremists, violent extremists, uh, are at the top of the list of, um, of, of people that we need to watch for. He puts them on a level with Al Qaeda. Uh, and today we have the Homeland Security Committee hearing from the head of the uh, DC National Guard and others as to what happened. On the other hand, I think that you know, it's still unfolding. More information continues to come out, but uh, I'm. Uh, we're going to get to the impeachment, the second impeachment. the The whole thing was just. Uh, uh, it well, really let's talk made about that. Cry. Let's just move into the second impeachment. I mean, just continue yeah. your story because it's it's so fascinating. So, okay, so you all of this happens. It's. it's that kind of a day, you learn about it, mm -hmm. um, and right. 
the president, the former president is impeached for the second time and you go through the trial. Personally, I thought the house managers did a phenomenal job. I mean, I was, I, I was scared watching some of that stuff, you know? I think they did a masterful job of laying out the case. And I also want to mention that while we were in our secure location, there were people from Hawaii and on the mainland calling and texting all of us because they were watching what was going on. The, the, the videos that we didn't even see up to that point, asking us whether we were okay. And where was Trump all this time? He was safely ensconced in the White House. And yeah, he told the people he, he was going to he was going to go to the go Capitol with them, with them and, and then he lie. dashes back in a... I mean, that was crazy. That, you know, when I was watching the, the video in the uh, impeachment trial, to the timeline as to matching up what he was doing and what yes. he was texting with, yes. the, with the riots were, or insurrection. Was. That's right. So uh, the article of impeachment inciting uh, an insurrection which covers uh, you know, the, the period before uh, January 6th, where he was basically putting out the big lie and, and just putting out the big lie that the election was gonna be stolen before the votes had even been cast. So yeah. before the election, before the, Janu the general election, during the general election, after the general election, they, they filed, he and his minions filed over 60 lawsuits and they either withdrew or they were dismissed on every single one of them, except one small one that made, that did not make any difference to the outcome. And they were basically thrown out of court because there was no fraud in the election that they could prove. So it makes you wonder, John, you and I are lawyers, you know, there's supposed to be yeah. some sanctions against lawyers to bring frivolous well, lawsuits, but those Do you think it's going to happen? Not apply. What, sanctions on the lawyers? I, I hope so. They are, I know some states are trying to do that. I hope so. You know, so. you know what is interesting to me, and it gave me some hope in all of this mess, because, I mean, even today, I, I, when I go and look at the news reports from Washington and elsewhere mm -hmm. across the country, I mean, it's still depressing. It's still like oh, a yes. cancer. Because know, it's and, not over. As Chris but, Ray says, these uh, people, the, the racially motivated extremists, i.e. Uh, the white supremacists, to a great extent, you can, you know, it's, they're still out there. And in fact, I just got a notice that we are on heightened security alert for tomorrow through Saturday because our intel community has, and our law enforcement people uh, have some information that, that there might be a plan to uh, try to uh, do something else to, to try to take the Capitol again. They're out there, they're heavily armed, many of them. And so it is not over. Well, I tell you, I just read uh, some reports, I think it was last week, which said that crimes against Asian Americans oh, yes. have gone up like 2,700% or something. Yes. Since, and mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's sickening, actually. Yes. To, to, and to in see fact, that. When Mayor Garland came before the Judiciary Committee, I asked them specifically about, you know, of course he had, he was very aware that uh, crimes like targeting Asian American Pacific Islanders, AAPIs ha has gone up dramatically. And uh, the fact is that when uh, you have a former president who continued to call COVID-19, the China virus, he, you had members of his administration calling it the Kung flu, you create an environment where the, there, these kinds of targeted random attacks will happen. And horrifically, some of these attacks have resulted in deaths. There right. apparently right. is more targeting of older AAPIs. They look more vulnerable. So in California and New York, knifings, random knifings, um, and leading the, the to lady, these cases, the, deaths. The, the lady, you know, <laughs> See, I don't understand this. Uh, so you may have to explain it to me, but how can somebody uh, yell a racial slur? I, I was watching this and then reach over and throw a helpless older yes. woman on the ground and, and just get picked up and released by the cops, not even get charged with anything more than, I don't even know what. It, it wasn't even an assault, you know? And I, and I, this I, is where uh, justice, justice and policing 
Act, which uh, uh, when the Republicans were in control of the Senate, they put out a bill that <laughs> um, an alternative to the Justice and Policing Act that were led by Kamala Harris and Cory Booker and a whole bunch of us signed on to it. And, and they had um, Tim Scott of South Carolina introduce their version, Tim Scott, the only um, black uh, member right. of the Senate, they kind of pushed him forward. And, and I said, <laughs> you know, I, I said, look, I like Tim Scott, but I'm not about to pass. I, I am not to vote for him. I will not vote for his half-assed bill. And right. so that didn't come forward, but I'm hopeful that th this kind of disparate policing and the disparate treatment of minorities by police, uh, I asked Merrick Garland, uh, are you going to uh, engage in, in uh, pattern and practice investigations of police departments, something that the uh, Obama administration had consent decrees and these don't just, it's not just imposed upon police departments, it's after negotiating with them and they had a number of these consent decrees, which by the way, the uh, Trump administration did not institute a single one of these pattern and practice of disparate policing um, on the books. And so this is something that Mary Garland, I know, is very aware of and where it, it is uh, warranted, they will, they will do that. And I'm not saying that you know, all police departments are corrupt, but uh, where disparate policing is a pattern and practice, something should happen. No, but you're yeah, right, John. It's inc amazing in this country that the racism. The racism, and I mean, the, the institutional racism is, mm -hmm. is clear because you, you yes. know, they arrest this guy, okay, you did a bad thing, but then they, they let him go. Or even the way that, the, in my opinion, the way that the uh, rioters were treated at the Capitol. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Uh, versus, you know, what was happening with uh, when you're on the street protesting for equal mm -hmm. treat equal yes. treatment, you got treated worse than when oh, you're yeah. attacking uh, the center of government. Uh, yes, this and, is inconceivable. And with uh, with tools, with uh, which they weaponized, uh, they came with zip ties. Who knows what they were planning to do, but they were definitely looking for members of, of Congress. They didn't care whether they were Republicans or Democrats. And they were, they were there to do harm and, um, uh, and lay siege to the Capitol. And so, yes, it just raises the whole question of, of how policing occurs in our country. And we all know that if it w were a group of Black Lives Matters protesters at the Capitol, there would have been that place would have been bristling with law enforcement. And uh, they were so- It would have been bristling and they would have probably been protesters that would have been shot or yes. something. I mean, I think uh, you would- Yes. You know, uh, I'm gonna, real quick before we take a short break, I, I wanted to ask you, how, how has this affected your staff? I mean, you know, people must have, I don't know if I was working in an office in the Capitol Mm -hmm. uh, that I would just remain unaffected by any of this. Uh, 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 are they like extra security for well, staff or, or what? Since March, we've been doing teleworking. So oh. it's, it's only a few of my staff who are with me um, and we're very careful. Uh, but yes, I think it impacts all of us emotionally that this could happen. And the person who was the main instigator of this gets away with, he gets away the second time and right. he goes to CPAC, uh, which is, is turned into a total cult of the Trump personality with the, the golden effigy. I, I couldn't you know, even the golden that. effigy. I mean, this is starting. <laughs> I, I got to tell you, uh, it's starting to resemble the rise of Hitler. I mean, I, yeah, I, don't want I think to... the analogies are there and he's still talking about the election being stolen. He throughout his speech he, he spoke for an hour or something i don't know he doesn't mention january 6th he doesn't mention the over 100 people who were hurt five people dying dead it, it is amazing they talk about an alternative reality and this is why i have concerns for our country i'm just glad that we now have a sane caring president and vice president they're making a huge difference in the covid of uh, <laughs> just just the um the the vaccinations that are being made available throughout our country is something that Trump never cared about. Amazing. 
over half a million people dead and he took no responsibility, left it to the states. They didn't have enough vaccines. Now, by May, we're told that uh, there will be enough vaccines for every adult in our country. And in the state of Hawaii, I talked with the health director. She wants to vaccinate 1.4 million people. We're not yeah, there I, yet, I, but, you know. Well, I think I think that, that well, we're going to take a short break because okay. that mm, thing has been coming up. And when we come back, let's talk about how the, the aftermath of all of this, you know, what happens now, what uh, what we're doing to prevent it from happening in the future. But, you know, just as importantly, is there any hope of <laughs> some kind of unified action on anything in, in the future? So we'll, we'll take a yeah. one minute break and we'll be okay. right back. Welcome back. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe and our special guest, Senator Maisie Hirona. You know, I, 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 it just amazes me. Uh, I, I, you know, I remember when we used to run around the Young Democrats together, and, and here <laughs> oh, yeah. you are, you're sitting <laughs> on the pinnacle of uh, American governance. You know, and who would have thunk it? <laughs> <laughs> but how fantastic that is on one hand. You know, I'm very because to be yeah, here. how fantastic that is, uh, and, and you know, so, it's moments like that or realizations like that that make us feel good about our country. And then you had <laughs> January sixth, yes. you know, and then you have all this stuff with the uh, picking on uh, Asians and A and Pacific Islanders and all of that, as well as mm -hmm. the traditional racism mm -hmm. that existed in the country. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, Senator, you know, given the events of this past January, what first, what uh, should we be doing to make sure it doesn't happen again? And will we ever have a country that we grew up being told mm -hmm. about again? You know, the thing is that the equal rights and the justice these were aspirational because underlying all that was uh, was racism. Racism was never far below the surface in our country, and it percolates up the Chinese Exclusion Act, the internment of Japanese Americans, the the Muslim ban, and so eternal vigilance is what's required of all of us. Uh, at the same time, you need an attorney general who will abide by the rule of law not like Barr, right. who was acted like he was the president's personal lawyer. And so our people at the, at the uh, people in leadership positions, starting with the president, the vice president, attorney general, these, these are all people who need to uh, uh, speak out of, I mean, truth would be really good because with Trump, we had multiple lies every single day. Every single day, the man would right. lie. And so you, we now have leaders for whom truth and uh, transparency are important values, not to mention the press. You will not hear Joe Biden calling the press the enemies of the people. And so the, the truth telling is really important, the, the reliance on facts to make decisions, to have a president who cares and who, are, who says so, who pays homage to the millions I mean, half a million have already died, all the people who have been impacted, to show that humanity is really important. And then for all of us to 
to denounce uh, the hate crimes that are happening in our country. And right now, there is particular attention regarding the AAPIs. Why? Because we're still in the middle of a pandemic. And there are some people who blame the pandemic on Asians, and they will they will act out on that belief. You know, it's, it's really it, it's troublesome. Uh, on yes. one hand, to me, that uh, that so many lawyers got away with bringing lies. I mean, Rudy Giuliani. Yes. I mean, he the, this guy was a hero at one time, and now yes. I, you know he just has no credibility. None. But I think the silver lining, especially with regard to the uh, challenges on the election fraud allegations, was the fact that not one single court, including some yes. that were where judges that were appointed uh, mm -hmm. by Trump, mm -hmm. I, you know, I thought yes. it was a joke. I mean, I thought those oh, guys yeah. didn't. You know, I, and as a member of the Judiciary Committee, you must have seen seen oh, that yeah. happen. Over but nevertheless, not nominees. even not even they bought into this yes. nonsense, you know. Yes. So at least that was good about. The There's that. On the other hand, uh, there are dozens of states that are considering over 200 voter suppression bills, even as we speak. And there's a really important one that the Supreme Court heard only yesterday, and it has to do with I, I think it was a voter suppression uh, effort on the part of the Arizona Republican Party. Uh, that the Supreme Court heard only yesterday. And one of the questions asked, of all things, by Amy Comey Barrett, who I did not support, by the way, for the Supreme Court, I believe she asked the question, basically, like, what, you know, why is a Republican, what is the interest of the Republican Party of Arizona in pursuing this? And the lawyer says, well, because, um, you know, ele the election's a zero-sum game. And, and when we have the, if we can get this particular voter suppression law uh, continue them, it gives us a better chance to win. I'm yeah, you get the Republicans need this said. to win. And, and, they and, can't and, do and, it, you know, the, <laughs> It's just shocking. It's shocking on one yeah. level. It's shocking in the sense, uh, for those of us who grew up being taught in elementary school that things like this don't happen in America, and, and, and it was also shocking that the lawyer was, in my opinion, arrogant enough to admit it. Oh, yes. They're very overt oh. about it. They, they feel like nobody's going to, what, their their voters are not going to care that their votes are being take, uh, taken away. It is crazy. This this whole situation with our country, uh, it, it, it's just, you know, John, when you and I were first doing politics and, well, we're still doing it, um, mm -hmm. that was many decades ago. And I think we really believed in the promise of our country and what we as young people could do to effect changes. And I'm glad that I'm still able to fight that battle. But when well, I, when I, I you see know, these, Senator, these, these... You've been fighting that it's... battle forever. <laughs> I, I remember when we were in the House of Representatives <laughs> and you were a young representative. Oh, my God. And, and you came and I was, the, uh, you know, the assistant majority leader and I was sitting with the majority leader, uh, Dennis Yamada. Oh, and I you came Dennis. in and you walked in <laughs> and you say, you know, it's only fair that if you're going to charge somebody for a sexual crime, the customer should be charged <laughs> as well. And, you know, and that was like revolutionary. You know? and, <laughs> and you got that, you got that started and you've been doing it. I, I, I got to tell you something. I, uh, you, you and I both um, were very, uh, admi you know, we're admirers of, of Patsy Ming. I, at least I was, and I know you were. Yeah. And I actually had uh, a chance to, she ran against me when I ran for governor. You know, a lot of people <laughs> don't know that. But she also really helped me to get to be governor and we got uh, to be quite close. And so she was one of my heroes too. And yes. I, I, and, uh, but you ought to know that I talked to a class of students uh, about two weeks ago and the new hero for uh, justice and so forth happened to be you. They, they, <laughs> they, they, they were saying the same things about you. So I, I, I shouldn't be, I'm not doing this just to look, but to let you know that there are people in Hawaii who truly appreciate yeah. their stance on issues that <laughs> are um, of that kind of foundational magnitude, you know, like justice and uh, racial equality oh. and the like. Uh, yeah. 
So yeah, they didn't actually. They were too young to really know about Patsy, but their current <laughs> favorite. <laughs> Isn't that something? Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm grateful they're paying attention, which is which is really nice. But as I say to, uh, I've been saying for a long time now, the battles we thought we had won for yeah. voting rights and women's right to choose, the battles we thought we had won never stay won, and that's why there's always battles to be fought and for the next generation. And so I just keep plugging away. <laughs> it's been a journey for me to get to uh, where I am and quite <laughs> unlikely journey, I have to say. Well, we're going to come back to that. <laughs> with a, But first, a quick question from one of the <laughs> listeners. He, he wants to know, and I, I don't know, he wants to know what is being done about pro, about these uh, racial groups in Hawaii. We've got a proud boys group. Fortunately, the guy got lost on the election, ran away. But I, I yes. assume there's going to be some kind of action or legislation or something about these radical groups. Or, there's a or, well, well, the storming of the Capitol, as uh, uh, FBI Director Ray said, that that was a, a terrorist act, and but we don't have a a, a law that actually says um, you can be charged with terrorist activity. So there's some bills. There, there's at least one bill to designate that as a specific crime as opposed to um, you know, property or damage or being where you're not supposed to be. Those, there are those kinds of, and of course, uh, terroristic threatening and, and there are those kinds of uh, laws. But th there's a lot more emphasis because it's clear, as he said, terrorism uh, spreads a lot, as fast as a as social media, and the spread of terrorism is as fast as, as social media. Well, that's, so that's, social media plays a role in all these people finding each other and goading each other. And you know, it was the, the biggest goader of them all was the president of the United States, as far as I'm concerned, former president. Yeah, the former. It was so it was so graphic to hear what he was texting in the middle of the, you know. But uh, I want to I want to talk a little bit about uh, Heart of Fire and Immigrant oh. Daughter's story. <laughs> so you wrote a book, yes. and it's coming out uh, very shortly. April twentieth. Is that when it's out? Well, the publication date is April twentieth. There's a lot that goes into it. I've discovered <laughs> yeah, doing a doing a memoir, but uh, and, uh, you know, I, I I wrote it because it was was to honor my mother because she is in a care facility. She really, she cannot speak for herself. And, and you know what, I, I just, I, I wouldn't be here without my mom. <clears throat> uh, you know, courage, courage and I, I know that you have, you have talked about that uh, a number of times, but for, for people who may not have known about it, you, she <laughs> was really a single mom that raised yeah. you up and brought you to a immigrants. Home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to to Hawaii, and here you are in the United States Senate. So, you know, this is the isn't this the paradox of mm -hmm. uh, of the United States? So that something like that could happen, yes. as well as the shoving of the lady in uh, down yes. on the in the grounds yes. of uh, New York City. And when I, I was mean, watching the news and the the pe young people and others in New York saying that they don't walk down the street listening to their music or anything they're very careful because these are random attacks and believe me uh, i think all asians are gonna uh, we all need to be aware of our surroundings it's not like i walk around it just <laughs> I, I am very aware and i don't go very far anyway <laughs> well come back come back to hawaii you know that's that's it'd be nice yes. yeah it, it's, it's you know it's like um I was just watching somebody make a presentation. Uh, this uh, African American person was talking about race, but he was contrasting what he where he lived now with the fact that he grew up in Hawaii. And yes. well, and 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 here we may we actually appreciate everybody's uh, differences, yes. and in the sense that there's no hesitation to say, you know, you're Japanese, I'm Native Hawaiian, something like that. But what we don't do is we don't use it as an excuse to hurt somebody. Yeah. And uh, uh, and yeah. so you know, but we I guess we all need to be vigilant about these things. So yeah. Senator, uh -huh. is there anything you want to say to the to the listeners before we uh, get uh, 
pulled off the air. Has oh, 30 minutes gone by already? Oh my God, yeah. not bad. <laughs> yeah, a little so. bit more than that, but we got to make sure you get a, you get to vote today because that, that, that still means true. a lot to Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a lot for the people of Hawaii. But again, yeah, we have a 50-50 divided Senate. Every Democratic vote counts. And this is a bill, huge bill, that's going to send over $1.6 billion to the state of Hawaii and hundreds of millions for education, everything, right? And right. I don't think a single Republican, except maybe, maybe Lisa Murkowski, I'm not sure, because Mitch McConnell is telling his Republican colleagues, don't vote for this bill. Not a single Republican voted for it in the House. So wow. here's a bill that's gonna help millions and millions of Americans and the Republicans can't even vote for it. It's just awesome. It's, a, it's just amazing that the, the total lack of care. So, so is, the, uh, want, is I'm, Senator I'm Munchen gonna vote for it? Uh, Munchen, Munchen, yeah. Yeah, Joe Manchin? Yes, ultimately, yeah. ultimately he will vote for it. But every day I'm grateful, John, that I represent Hawaii because I tell people we have, you know, we, we Ohana is, um, there's this idea of we care not just for our own families, but outside of our family, it's our ohana. That's more than just words to us. And I talked with my colleagues about that. And they say, well, you have something like that? I said, yes. So one of my best friends in the Senate uh, was, is Heidi Heitkamp, North Dakota. Wow, yeah. And uh, she, whenever she would see me with people from Hawaii, she would come up and she says, you know, I'm part of Maisie's ohana. <laughs> <laughs> well, so Senator. Grateful. That so, I represent a place like Hawaii where diversity is really uh, important. And I can tell you, one of the things that I bring back from when I'm home is food. Lao Lao and <laughs> noodles and manapua, <laughs> kimchi, daikon. You, you know, I'm recipe? not supposed to, but I will confess to you that yesterday I snuck off and got a spam musubi. Now, I I'm never spam. supposed to eat that anymore, but here I am. Life is short. <laughs> I say life is short. I'm eating it. <laughs> thank you so much, Senator. We are, I appreciate no, you. your your willingness to talk to us and the people sure. of Hawaii and your service. Your service everyone, to our state. Everyone in Hawaii, stay safe, be kind. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha.